Hey, it's Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm joined by Mark and Maya from Board Game Coffee. And if you don't know, before I let them talk about themselves and whatnot, uh, Board Game Coffee is a channel that I have been a huge fan of since, well, since before I was a content creator. Their humor, their style, their everything is absolutely, I don't know, I just, I just like when Brittany is giving Mark a hard time, honestly, is my favorite thing. But past that, the reason I reached out to them today is because, like myself, and like you guys all know this already, is they are also huge fans of Come On, and I thought it'd be fun to do a video just about stuff Come On. And I recently did a whole top 10 list, so this is not going to be a top 10 list. Rather, this can be something a little different where we've picked for each category, we've picked a different kind of title, and then we're going to discuss our various Come On game that fits that title. And that's enough talking about the list, but Mark and Maya, welcome to the show. Good to have you here. Well, it's Thank you. Pleasure. Awkward I, segue where I just assume that you'll know you're supposed to talk. It's that's, that's my <laughs> bad, not yours. Thanks for having us. We're so excited to have this combo with you. So before we go into the actual list, just tell people why they should check out your channel, what to expect. Tell them to tell. First of all, I'm gonna tell them you should head over to the channel and check it out. But <laughs> as far as from your stance, what what's you know what can you sell, sell yourselves? Well, uh, Board Game Coffee, we do a lot of reviews, previews, unboxings. Those are our more popular videos. And uh, But our channel, we try to add a little comedy into our channel. So if you come watch us, we're a little different because we do like there's skits and um, reviews are like scripted. The unboxings are not. And the unboxings are crazy long. They're like in 4K. We open up everything <laughs> get a, get really in close make sure that the dice work yeah so <laughs> it's i i guess that's it we try we're trying to be different trying to be lively and we're trying to just be ourselves and be funny at the same time that kind of implied that we're not funny when we're ourselves but we are that's <laughs> i'm trying rambling this is what i do on the show no I no listen I, honestly i've done the same thing so basically i have my channel obviously which i talk about games and then completely at home when i'm taking the lead but then whenever i've been a guest on someone else's thing suddenly i'm like no i'm i'm used to doing i'm used to controlling the show here it's <laughs> totally different it throws you off um i'm significantly quieter on other people's shows on my own show because like right now for instance this is i'm leading this conversation that's all great but like when someone else is leading the conversation i just sit there and wait patiently <laughs> in any case all that aside let's start with the list so to begin with like i said already this is going to be a list of assorted command titles and starting off with number one we're going to be discussing our biggest disappointment command game what game was the biggest disappointment in terms of what you were hoping for what you thought it would deliver what experience you thought it would be and then the reality and if you want to start this one off you know it's interesting you brought this one up this was uh the first question you um we were discussing this and we we, we kind of had disappointments for two different reasons. So we had two different games for two different reasons. And as far as like, one of them is the most disappointing because I was excited about it and we got it and it was like, it didn't live up to it. And the other one is everybody kept saying this game was awesome. So I tried it and I didn't think it was that awesome. Okay. Uh, but you know, I think we should go with the first one because the other one, let's go with the first one. Here it is. We'll tell you what the other one is later. Night of the Living Dead actually, which is their newest one that's out now. You seem so excited yeah. about it. You just played well, it. Well, we're still excited about it, and it's still a great experience. Yeah, we're not saying it's necessarily a bad game, but I was like, we're huge zombie side fans, and we played just tons. Like, we went all the way through season two. We crushed Black Plague. We did a whole live stream yeah. on my birthday for Zombie Side Invader. Yeah, and for those who are new to the channel, like, we are the zombie side people that will start at 9 a.m. in the morning and go until 3 a.m. the next day, kind of thing. Like, we'll play the game the whole day. And, and I like zombie movies. Like, we like zombie movies. So, and the original Night of Living Dead, you figure you take like the granddaddy of zombie movies and you put it with Zombie Side, like our favorite zombie game series, and we're like, it's gonna be awesome. But it was here's the thing: it's not that it's not awesome. It's just like it's like your first Zombie Side experience. It's it dumped it, they, things down. Like I know they, they took out the down. runners, but I thought like they compensated by adding like the brick smashers or breaking down doors or whatever they yeah. had there. So we had to turn the game up. Uh, to the hard mode right away, just because we found it was a little on the easier side. But theme wise, it follows the movie. So it's really enjoyable. You can go watch the movie and then play this game and feel like you're the characters and you're, you're killing zombies. And that's really cool. Um, it was just more of if we took it from the whole zombie side experience, this one 
just didn't live up to the expectations we, like Black Plague did. Yep. Like Black Plague, I still want to go back and play. And although this campaign was really fun with uh, Night of the Living Dead, I would still rather go play Black Plague. Yeah, it's it's just if you're like hardcore zombie siders like we are like played it as much as we did like we we only get hurt if we just take stupid chances and we do sometimes just for fun for fun yeah because even when we cranked it up it's easy mind you we did a playthrough and we did play an easier level but we cranked up the difficulty but we've played later levels because we've played quite a bit we think we play like eight missions so far out of ten um but thing is the variety there's not as much variety as well because the tiles there's only like six or seven tiles i think maybe only six and most of the game is played in the house gotcha. so you don't even swap the tiles like a lot of times it's the same four tiles that build the house and a lot of what lose conditions are like make sure there's no zombies in the house at the end of your turn or at the end of this and it's, it hasn't been difficult yet like we just but the experience is still enjoyable. Yeah, I mean, you've yeah. played, you said this, and it's funny because I have the same thing for mine, which is uh, you said you just played eight of the ten missions in terms of the game that's your biggest disappointment, uh, which is, I mean, there's a reason this this, this category <laughs> specifically wasn't, you know, least favorite come on game because that's, it's no fun to just bash on a game that doesn't really do it, but this was your biggest disappointment in terms of what you expected. And so for me, for mine, for my categories, again, similar to yours in terms of I wanted a lot from it and I also played it a good seven or eight times somewhere in that range although it's a long time ago not last week so a little harder but mine's arcadia quest which is a game that i i, I love one thing i always talk in my videos is i love powers i love upgrades i love things that make you feel cool and arcadia quest has that one to the spades every round you go through your mission you then you sit there and you upgrade your equipment in between rounds you go into the next mission upgrade your equipment continue onwards and so forth and it just seemed exactly like the kind of a game i'd want and then there's character powers as well and tons of characters and 14 kickstarters worth of stuff and it didn't do it for me it just it, it i don't like that mix of semi co-op and i mean not semi co-op not co-op i don't like the mix of pve and pvp where you're attacking the board itself, but then you're also attacking other players. And then it ends up in this cycle of one player, like, knocking another one and whatnot in terms of, you know, you'd... Sorry, not knocking. You'd, you'd have someone who's taken the last hit. So you sit there and wait back from the monsters, and then someone, you know, you rush in, and someone tries to get a hit, and then someone else closes in and finishes off the whole creature, and they get all the rewards. And it just... The whole thing didn't... It was fine. I played, like you said, I played seven, eight games, but it didn't give me the experience I was looking for, and I missed those chibi minis. <laughs> we never played Arcadia Quest ourselves. Yeah, we, played we played Starcadia. Arcadia. Oh, so how Starcadia Quest? Uh, Starcadia sounds Very exactly similar. sounds exactly the same. So yeah. I, mean, I, I was super <laughs> interested in Starcadia, but I held off. I was like, it can't be different enough that it's going to change my mind. It doesn't sound like it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's I'm lasers thinking. instead of magic spells. But other than that, like your just your description. Of the experience, very similar to ours. Very similar to ours, but I think we minded it probably a little less because we like screwing each other over. Yeah, well, don't get me wrong. Again, same thing. I liked it. I just, I don't know. I feel like if I want to, like, if I want to, if I want to have a different, for instance, uh, Rum and Bones is a different game which gives me a totally different feel in terms of being able to just mess with each other head to head, and I love that. Uh, it, I just didn't like the mix of PV and PVP in Starcade in Arcade Quest. Yeah. All right. Although yeah. I do want the. I do want all the the storm the thorn troopers I think it says the thorn troopers, mm -hmm. yeah all the Star Wars stuff and whatnot, and so mm -hmm. that is category number one, which brings us to category number two, which is which command game has your favorite basically the the favorite command minis meaning which command game has your favorite miniatures from all the command games you have like want are getting coming up any of those, yeah we uh, we have two different answers on this but I. Oh, wait, what was what was your second answer from the last question? Oh, okay. Oh. Well, here's the thing. Hold on. Before you, the second answer, the reason I didn't go with that one is because it's uh, uh, guess, not. it wasn't a Simon game the whole time. It was Sheriff of Nottingham? Interesting. It, the, but the art was redone. Well, the art was. Yeah, I know. And it looks way. The thing is, well, it's it's Simon's now. Yeah. yeah, it looks great. But everybody around me, like I go to, I work at a video game studio, and there's a lot of people who play board games, and. I was hearing about Sheriff of Nottingham forever. Like, oh, it's so good. You got to play it. And people were describing it to me. And I was like, well, how do you play? And they're like, well, you lie to each other. You try to stick things in bags and fool people. I'm like, but you don't like games. Okay. Like that. So I was like, so we gave it a go. And I was like, and everybody at the table was like, this is awesome. Let's do it again. And I was like, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I was like, that was, I was everybody hyped that up for me. It, and I was like, I don't care for the bluffing games. 
I just it doesn't do it for me. So it's funny because question number three, a bit of a spoiler to question number three, is your favorite non-miniature Kamon game. And I specifically debated putting Sheriff of Nottingham on that list, but the problem because I love Sheriff of Nottingham, everything you said yeah. about not liking it, I, I'm with everyone else at the table there. Yeah, but, <laughs> I'm the only one I know that doesn't like her. She loves it. I like it. I love it. It is such a hilarious, fun game. But the only reason I, I didn't include that one is because. I actually don't like Kaman's newer version of it. I prefer the oh. old art, the old style, the old components and all that. And so I was like, well, I can't put the version on the table that's different and I like less. So I, I kept it off for that reason. But <laughs> I hear, I, listen, bluffing games are always a tough one because, I don't know, it's just a tough category. You either like it or you don't. And here's the thing, it's, there's the two different types of bluffing. There's like, there's Sheriff and Nottingham where I'm like, just right to your face lying. Yeah. I've got three apples in here or whatever. I can't remember. Played no, one. you did it right. You I, did it right. <laughs> um... But if it's like a hidden betrayer game, like uh, Dead of Winter, then I, I'm great. I, I like those. So which part of the direct line do you not like? Why? What's the difference it, to you? It's kind of mixed. It's I kind of mixed the main in. mechanic. It's as a main like, mechanic. I don't I'm just, like it. But if it's like a side mechanic into a game so, like Rise of Sun, like I can pretend to be a good guy. Of what it. about the resistance or One Night Ultimate World for any main mechanic games where you're pretending to be a bad guy? Yeah, I don't like those either. Oh, okay, fine. So it's the main mechanic aspect. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> Yeah. Very good. Uh, I'm not. I'm not crazy about this. But hold on. There's one of those I do like, and that is uh, Bang the Dice Game, which is like a, a dumbed down version of that. But <laughs> I do. I do like that. So, Nanika, going back to the question of your favorite Command miniatures, which you have two right. apparently. Oh yeah. We do. Uh, Brittany, you can go. You can okay, go first. so my favorite one is Rising Sun. Rising Sun. Okay. I love the minis. I think they're they're absolutely creepy and terrifying, and beautifully done at the same time if that makes like the no the I, I have it artwork that's gone into it is i just have such an appreciation for the details that they've put into these minis and the fact that you can even get it in that small of a mini and have that much detail i just what's amazing what's amazing about those is i just assumed oh they're like 3d renders like somebody awesome 3d modeler did this but it, you there's videos of them carving them out of clay and they're like this big are you serious they're carbon, I think they carbon out of clay and then scan because there's a there's a video of a guy making it and it's like it's too too close not to be what they base it on. And I'm pretty sure I've heard uh, other studios do that where they make it out of clay first and then they 3D scan it and they make the model out of that. But there's videos online of this guy sculpting the rising sun things and I'm pretty sure that's how they made them and it looks amazing. That's absolutely insane. I mean, although it does to a certain extent give you that level of detail. If you're like either digital modeling or a large something is going to give you that level of detail. But that's that's absolutely insane. Yeah, Rising Sun has, I mean, I, I don't know. Kaman has gone through so many different games. And I guess I'm going to cut into mine before we get to your second one because I didn't know we were allowed to do two games for a category. Although <laughs> there's two of you. So so we'll give you that leeway. But so mine, mine was, and I cheated on mine because... I don't know if I can technically call it my favorite miniatures for a game that isn't out yet, but I chose Massive Darkness 2, which mm -hmm. I love the miniatures. I don't know if you followed that campaign, but I loved the miniatures in that campaign, which I find particularly ironic considering how much backlash that campaign had because they had they, they just went through the whole gauntlet of different styles. They had the semi-cartoony style, but also mixed with, you know, unicorns and then spirits and then uh, cherubs and giant care bears. And they had just, just had a sheer giant gauntlet of different miniatures that I just, I want little punny coins on my table. I like to be able to throw that little cute cartoony style. It's always been one of my favorite styles from their games in terms of games like Besieged, games like, I mean, I love the, the miniatures from games like Blood Rage or Rising Sun. I love that, how well done they are. But I particularly like the cartoony style. I miss, like Arcadia Quest, I miss the chib the chibis. That's my thing. Yeah. Like chi Marvel United? Yeah. Marvel, no. I have Marvel United. Oh, I have. I backed the full Marvel United. It's actually funny you say that. The one I was going to pick before I remember Massive Darkness was Marvel United. I was going to pick that one because they have all the heroes and everything else. Uh, I think the only reason I didn't is, as much as I love the chibis in Marvel United... I, I just think I find it slightly less inspired because it's already an existing work. So even though I love them, I'm super excited to get all these little tiny chibis from all the millions of different Kickstarter exclusive characters. It just it didn't feel as, I guess, inherently inspired as some of their other stuff is. Mm -hmm. oh. well, the uh, the other one we had on, on the list, and this was me humming and hawing because I was like, oh, man, I don't know. This Riding Sun is gorgeous. Like, I love those green minis, but they have a little person on top of them as well. Mm -hmm. It's like a mini on a mini. Yeah. But the other, my other option was hate. Hate was the other one I thought of. Yes. 
the the detail on those are crazy. And the whole game is is so violent. Crazy. It's not for everybody, crazy. but the artwork. It's like, incredible. It's like nightmare fuel. Yeah, hate <laughs> has it's fascinating because hate is one that I I got and I got rid of without playing. It's just because I had too many games I wasn't playing at a certain point. Although it is on my list to get back again at some point. But I remember the miniatures in there were some of the most impressive miniatures that Kaman has possibly ever done. Like I I'm constantly comparing Kaman to Kaman in terms of the miniature quality, and I think they hit a certain peak with Blood Rage and have been able to achieve that with certain games here and there. But sometimes it's always been yeah, hate was incredible. Yeah, hate, hate was one of the, I think, the few unboxings where I was like, well, not maybe once, you gotta do this all the time. But probably the, the most, uh, loud, the loudest, like, reaction of like, oh my God, look how awesome this is. Cause it was just like awesome mini after awesome mini. Like, they looked just wicked cool. And the, the attention to detail on them is just, just crazy. And they kept escalating the size. Like, they have that giant creature on the, the back of the Mother Prophecy expansion. Like, the giant creatures. They just kept... It's like, yeah. I saw someone do a video comparison of how Kaman keeps upping the size of their miniatures and whatnot. Even going so far as showing the Zomicide dragons and that giant thingy. It, it's yeah. it's impressive. It's visually impressive. We have, oh, the, we have the Cthulhu, which is the size of a small toddler. You have the full Cthulhu? It is yeah. legit we, we now a, a part of our home. We did because a Because it is so big, it's just always out and it's... It's now decoration. We did a playthrough <laughs> of uh, the uh, playing with the mini. Yeah. We actually recorded two. We recorded a regular session, but the only one we've put out so far has been the one with the giant Cthulhu. Oh, yeah. Because that was tricky to record because you have to have it's cameras so around it to see, to be able to record. We had six cameras or something. I don't know. No, not really. Two cameras. It doesn't matter. But anyways, editing that was tricky because you have to read. Now you're in front. Now you're behind it. Now, you can't just have an overhead camera. It didn't work. Yeah, no, so. that, that one, I, I mean, I consider myself a pretty, apparently you guys are bigger Kaman fans than I am, because <laughs> I I am a, I buy everything Kaman, and that, I was like, that's too much for me, that's just, you're just appealing to people who just want giant hordes of plastic now, which apparently, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was, when I got it, I was like, this is amazing, I can't wait, it's, yeah, it's downstairs in our theater. Yeah. <laughs> right now. And it's funny, because our friends who aren't board gamers just think it's this giant monster statue that we have, yep. and then our board gamers are like ooh, it's cthulhu <laughs> so i i don't know i want i want them to do something like that again but with something that i'm more intrigued by like I, first of all i think they could have almost gotten away with it putting a giant thanos or something like that i don't know but it, it's for me cthulhu as a theme is something that i just never i mean i love cthulhu that may die don't get me wrong but it just never really pulled me in as a theme so i didn't get the giant cthulhu had that yeah. been a giant dragon that size i would have i would have Bit for sure, and I, I listen. Come on, if you when when you watch this, not if you watch this. Come on, when you watch this, uh, I, I'll sign me up for a giant plastic dragon. I'll, I'll probably get it, wife permitting. We'll see. Come on's watching this. Uh, if they could make some more missions for the giant Cthulhu, that'd be great because there's only like one. That's a good yes. point. Two hundred and fifty dollars should earn. Like they do like Friday missions on a regular basis on their like Facebook page for different games. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So which yeah. brings us to question number three which I think I'll take the, the the point of this one. This one you already know the spoilers for, which is what is your favorite non-miniature come on game? Which, by the way, I will say, I put this in just to be different, but in hindsight, it is my least exciting question, which will tell you how I feel about come on and their games. But <laughs> basically for me, it's Lorenzo El Magnifico, which is, I think, cheating a bit because they have different games on their list in terms of different games that they've gotten the publishing rights or at some point. Like, I even just saw them listed on Root recently, which I thought was interesting. I don't even know what they do or don't do, but they're listed somewhere on Borg and Geek for Root. But Lorenzo Magnifico is a game that actually, we talked about this before starting recording, which is, you know, Coimbra, right? So yep. the same designers as Coimbra did Lorenzo El Magnifico. And while yep. I personally prefer Coimbra, uh, Come on, wasn't involved in that one, and I love Lorenzo El Magnifico. It's very similar in terms of it's a hardcore Euro game, lots of card, but pick, picking different cards, trying to fill out different scoring thingies, rolling dice and whatnot, trying to allocate the dice to different columns. It is definitely a hardcore Euro game with a tiny little Come on logo snapped in the corner, which is why it gets to make my pick. That's nice. That's that is cheating. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I get well again. We have two because we each have two different opinions on this one, uh, but we don't have two problems. This, this might be one of the last ones we had two for. But um, go ahead, Britt. Let's, there, go with yours. Mine's Gizmos. Yeah. Gizmos. Okay. I really like that. So Gizmos I thought about, because Gizmos I think... I mean, like I said, I'm cheating a bit, just because they, they have the publishing. They have the logo somewhere. But Gizmos is very much one that... 
I, I actually, that one's more Kaman associated, I guess, mentally associated. And I did enjoy it, but I didn't actually end up keeping it. So I couldn't put it on my list. Yeah. Fair. Uh, Gizmos, I do like Gizmos, but I was torn. So that's why I put Ethnos. I, I love, oh, Ethnos. I should have picked Ethnos. Oh, too late. Dibs. You're right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ethnos is excellent. Ethnos is excellent. I totally <laughs> forgot that Ethnos, that Kaman published Ethnos. And so first of all, I love how you're like apologizing to her for not picking Gizmos. You're like, I'm sorry, sweetie. It's <laughs> it's another yeah, game. I'll talk about this later. <laughs> but yeah, Ethnos is another. Uh, yeah, I totally forgot Ethnos. Kaman did Ethnos. I have that on my shelf. It. I hate the art. I want a deluxe Kaman miniature version or something different. But I do enjoy that game a lot. Yeah, you could definitely bury that game in minis and mask it as something else. It would be just as good. It just wouldn't be as portable. Yeah, it comes with like six boxes. Hundred yeah, percent. I mean, it, it was, would... I mean, I want more tribes for that game. I don't mind if Kaman throws their stretch goal tribes at Ethnos. Here's a stretch goal and a new tribe and a new tribe. And look, just giant 3D board. Look, a spot for your giant Cthulhu on our Ethnos board. They can do stuff. Be Ethnos Deluxe. And it's just going to be, they're going to come out. Everything's going to be minis. It's going to be a giant near pre mat that you could sleep under. It'd be great. It's funny because if you do this right, Ethnos is frequently complained as a great game with terrible production value. But if Kaman gives it the full Kaman treatment, maybe we could have people complaining about how it's all overly produced and a terrible game. Maybe we can get yeah. that full cycle. Yep, that would be great. <laughs> I, I feel like I should should make two videos. Maybe we can combine this. We'll do just both sides of it. Will it be like a, a debate? Uh, uh, <laughs> we which support each one, and then the, yeah, whatever. Sorry. I'm, <laughs> I, I, and so, question number four, which is, what is your most anticipated come on game? Meaning, something you don't have. Some ideally, otherwise, it's not really anticipated. But something you don't have that you are just super excited for. I'm excited for Ankh. I'm really excited for Ankh. Okay, I do have a different answer. Because, <laughs> okay, Ankh, the minis look great. They look wicked. They, they look great. But the thing is, I feel like Ankh is just gonna, it's just gonna come and it's gonna, I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna like it. I'm not like excited for it because I feel like it's just part of the series. It's, but it's part of the trilogy. You know, and, and I am, like, I, here's the thing I am excited for Ankh. I am. But, but I'm more excited. To try Trudvang, or to play Trudvang, because it's, it's a it's more it's game. more different than what like it's it's got more of a kind of a tainted Grail type of yeah, vibe, but goes. not as hardcore. Because uh, we played a demo actually of Trudvang at. Oh, uh, I know. Yeah. I saw you guys on camera. Oh. <laughs> oh. You know you're in a video online, right? No. No. You don't know this. <laughs> <laughs> well, did we, oh, we, yeah. were, we were in front of the I don't think we saw the video. We never saw it. We just saw cameras so there. After the whole convention, Come on did a video where they, they showed how much people were enjoying uh, uh, Trudvang because mid campaign, Trudvang stalled a bit. Uh, it was going. It was doing very well at first. It had their whole early bird. People were, jo- were in on it or whatever. And then mid-campaign, the whole thing started stalling, started losing backers. And come on, pivoted to doing some daily goals instead of pure stretch goals, daily reveals. Uh, this is before. Da- this is right, right about the time daily reveals were starting to become a more popular thing in Kickstarter. And then one of the things they did is they had just had the convention. I don't know what it was, but one of the conventions. And apparently, you guys were at it because they have a video showing all the people enjoying. Trudvang and talking about it and you guys like have a good 30 40 seconds of, of screen time i forgot all about i remember that. somebody talking I to remember us yeah. that that was gen con we were at gen con yeah and uh and true bank is like from the little we played and we played with the designer um yeah. and it was it was great uh it was oh i forgot his name not eric it was uh oh he's from brazil uh fabio fabio tola Bam, Fabio Tola is a great guy. I don't know why he dropped a blank on his name. But yeah, he played with us and he walked us through and I thought it was awesome. And w- if anybody was filming us at the time, you would have been seeing us being like, "What? why did you go? Why would you do this? The back and forth. It's like, that's a bad decision. <laughs> Just us arguing about like doing bad moves. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, yeah. So for me, this is our first crossover, I think, which is I have Ankh as well. Which is, cool. Ankh is, to me, I mean, Blood Rage and Rising Sun. Rising Sun was a bit, I mean, I don't know where you guys lie in this whole thing, but for me, Blood Rage versus Rising Sun, Blood Rage is one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, Rising Sun is was a good follow-up, but I enjoyed Blood Rage more. But between the miniatures, which I love the miniatures of Ankh as well, and the, this, I don't know, it just looks, it doesn't have drafting. Drafting is one of my favorite mechanics. 
But the idea of the complete complete trilogy hopefully being as good as Blood Rage or even as good as Rising Sun, it is the, the theme, the crocodiles. I love all the crocodile miniatures. They look amazing. But yeah, Ankh is a game that I am incredibly excited for and super hyped to play if I if or when we actually get around to that one. But yeah, that was and then you said Trudvang. Trudvang was one of that one of the ones that I was thinking of because Trudvang for me is while it didn't make my list uh, because I all these things I kept on cutting different things. There's only one of me, so I can only get one in. But Trudvang <laughs> is one that I it's something different. I don't know what where it's gonna lie, where it's gonna play out, but I love the idea of that board with the sleeves fitting and the cards fitting into the board, evolving as you play, but evolving in a way that doesn't involve constantly resetting up a board. You literally just pull out the board. It's all there. It's all prepped, ready for your next go. And while the gameplay looked a bit simplistic, it also looked appealing. I mean, come on in general has mostly not let me down on gameplay. It's a very specific style. It's not for everyone. They do have a range in terms of Ankh, uh, Rising Sun, and Blood Rage are the more strategic games. But there are other games I, I like, and I feel like you're making choices, and I... As long as I feel like I'm making choices, that's good enough for me usually. And so, yeah, but that was that was close to my pick, but Ankh was my final pick there. I think Simon has a does a great job, at least like in my experience. When I learned a Simon game, I always sit there and I play it. And I was like, this is actually easy. Like that's what it felt like. like most of them, I was like, this is actually not that bad. Yeah. Like you see it. Like we've taught Rising Sun to quite a few people. And it's out on the table and people are like, oh, this looks intimidating. But once we just talked you through it, it was like, we're just going to go through it. And, most, and the steps are printed right on the board. You know, we're going to go to the tea ceremony. We're going to do this and that, and that. And so we just follow this like list that's written on the top of the board. And it's it's simpler than it looks. It's like this, it looks complicated. It's deceiving, but it's simple. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's no, I'm right there with you. Well, it doesn't take away from the strategy around it or the complication of you know just the gameplay. Yeah, I mean, there's a common thing these days of like people, I think it's just because we have so many games that at a certain point you hit this threshold where complexity, depth does not require complexity. But the more games you have, the more you, I guess, hit those points where you've hit all the simple stuff that has depth. And so designers very often feel the need to cram stuff into the game because it has to be something new. It has to pull people in. And come on, for the most part, has done a very good job of for most of their games, keeping it simple and yet strategic. And some of the cooperative games have a little bit more maintenance or management, but even then you have, as long as you have one person who knows all the edge cases in Zombicide, you can, I can get people up and running in Zombicide in like six minutes. And sure, I know what happens if this, this, and this happens, and that's all we need. Uh, Cthulhu Death May Die, you can teach people that entire game in six to ten minutes, up and running. Uh, some of their competitive, competitive games are always a little harder because you can't help people out in a tough spot because you're usually the one that put them in a tough spot. You have to make sure that they're up and running from the get-go, but even then, you're you're right. Their their games are generally pretty easy to get people going. Because we talk about like Trudvang, and as I compared them to Tainted Grail, because it feels very much the the same to me. But Tainted Grail, even though we love Tainted Grail, we play that plenty. Um, it's a lot more complicated than Trudvang. Like it feels even harder to learn because this, this battle mechanic. It's everything is just on the outside. It's more complicated, and but great game worth the work. But you sit down for True Bank, and that's what I was expecting. And then when when uh, Fabio talked us through it, I was like, we were it? playing with him. We're good to go. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. yeah. He's like, okay. Five or seven minutes. We were and yet you still had fun, which is awesome. Yeah. And they did a good job of like, oh, I get it. I get this. Yeah, right. and it had a very unique art style as well, which initially didn't pull me in, but as the campaign developed, I just found myself slowly... I guess just at a certain point, you get bored of the same old miniatures again and again and again. And so it, anytime a campaign shifts it up and gives me something a little bit different, something I don't yet have, something exactly similar, I, I, yeah, the the style pulled me in on, both, on those games. Okay, which brings right. us to category number five, which is your most played Come On game. Oh, hey, this is the first same answer for both of us. Woohoo! Wow. It happened. Uh, we're, going, we're going first. Yeah. All right. It's for us, hands down, Zombie Side Black Plague. That's we your most played. played that to death. You know, it's funny. We played that game so many times. We've played that game more times than there is scenarios in the book, but we have yet to play the last two scenarios because we start a campaign and then people come over like, oh, you got to try zombie sites. So we start from the beginning and we keep going. Then we try to start from the beginning. So we kept starting from the beginning. And by the time we we're like, you know what? Let's just buckle down and get through this campaign. And then we got up to like scenario 10 of 12 or whatever it was. And we stopped. Yeah, and that's <laughs> where it starts happening. The giant map tiles, the, the three by three. Sorry, what was that? That's and then the last scenarios is when it starts having those giant three by three map tiles. Yeah. And I don't think we 
Is, it, is that what it does? I don't remember. I don't remember. I think we, so. And we you, played so many zombie side games. Version I, now, I could, double blur. And have you played play. Wolfsburg? What about the Wolfsburg scenarios? No, we haven't. No, you haven't played Wolfsburg? Because he, here's the thing. Uh, when we got Zombie Side Black Plague, we bought it off the shelf. We didn't even kickstart that. So we just got Zombie Side Black Plague. We never had any expansions. So our first Zombie Side Kickstarter was in uh, Invader. And when we went all, all in on that, there's so much content. And we, we tried barely to, touched we, well, no, all we, the content that we, we had. We did a lot of stuff. We did it. a lot, yeah. We did a lot of We played a lot of it, but there's still so much. So, so I have a few very important questions at this point, which is, have you played with the Dead Eye Archers, Dead Eye Walkers? No. Have you played with the Wolves? No, I think a lot of these answers are going to be no. No. <laughs> have you played, what else do we have? We have we have Wolves, we have Dead Eye Walkers. I feel there's a third one I'm forgetting, but I don't remember, so I'm going to let you off the hook for that. Okay, so, so Zombicide Black Plague, before we get into my answer, Zombicide Black Plague is my second most played command game. And this is both in terms of hours played as well as terms of time played. It's my second most. Uh, and it is an incredible game. Uh, Black Plague personally is my favorite version of Zombicide from the ones that I've played. It's like Green Horde's great. Uh, Invader I like. I just constantly compare it to Black Plague and it comes away wanting. I almost put Invader as my biggest disappointment because of that. Because I was like, oh, more Zombicide. This is the first time I'm involved in a Zombicide campaign. And then it wasn't as good as Black Plague for me. And so... Black Plague, though, one of the reasons I love Black Plague so much compared to Invader, which is why I want to try Invader with all the stuff before I give it away, or not give it away, before I sell a trader or whatever, is that Black Plague, the archers and the wolves make the game so immensely entertaining. So the wolves, just to begin with, are pretty pretty simple. It's they move, they get three activations compared to two. That's all it does. Mm. But then that means when you open a door as your last action of the turn, if you suddenly find yourself facing wolves, you're dead. It's over. So it suddenly changes the entire game and the speed at which the wolves approach you, it just, it kills everything. You have to be so on your toes. And then the archers just, instead of, if they have line of sight of three, up to three, they can shoot up to three spaces, then instead of moving, they shoot. So again, it changes those hallways so drastically. I love the additions of those two. And then obviously more abominations is great too. Do you have any abomination packs? Uh, well, we just, no, for black plane, we just got the abominations that came with it. In okay. Vader, we got tons. <laughs> the abominations yeah. add so much to that game. The the extra heroes are the least important part, but it does give you variety. But I mean, I love Black Plague, but I love Black Plague with all the stuff. And Wolfsburg adds towers from where you can shoot down, and it changes that. I, Wolfsburg, I like the wolves the most, but everything it adds. And then there's still a ton of stuff from Green Horde that I haven't touched in terms of spirits and rats and all these other things that I still haven't gotten to, including the necromantic dragon. But Black Plague is my favorite, but you have to try some of these stuff there. Making insane. me want to go back and play now. Like I'm like well, now. Let's get some expansions. Have to get expansions. But yeah. here's here's the thing: is Invader. Uh, what Invader changed from Black Plague is, I think Invader was the first zombie side, at least the first one I played, where you don't open a door and it's filled with zombies. The zombies come to you. Yeah. Which to me was a letdown. You like that? I I, I prefer opening doors. Yeah. But, and thema out what's but thematically, it makes, makes sense. sense. It makes sense that I'm inside, the zombies are outside, they're trying to get in. So it seems more like a traditional zombie movie. So it makes sense that that's the system they use for Night of the Living Dead. Uh, especially when you're playing in a house where there's only like four rooms in it and two side rooms. Yeah. So um, so it makes sense that way. But I do prefer this surprise of opening a door and you're like, that's, what, that's one of my favorite parts of Zombicide is that idea of, of that lack of knowing what's going to happen and the timing. Like, you want to start that game early and open as many doors as possible while you're still in blue, but then you have hordes of zombies while you're not powered up. Or you can wait when you're powered up, but now they're spawning on yellows. It's it's That whole unknown aspect is so much more satisfying to me. I, I just recall, did, did we do the question, so did we cover most anticipated? Uh, I, most, I, picked, I picked completely wrong. Zombicide 2? I erase everything I've said. Zombie I, side I just recalled. No, it's uh, the Teberu. Teberu? Zombie side Teberu. So, what's going? I haven't heard anything about Teberu since they last announced it. I haven't heard a thing. I assume it's well, dead. Because they were supposed to were really supposed wrap up to... this year, and then the world. During March. Uh, yeah, and the, March, April, the world. March, April, March, April. The world went to to poo, and they're in Italy, and Italy went to poo first. Oh wow. So, um, but so we, I think things are just on hold. Have you played yeah. with the Teberu? Yes. And it's awesome. It's awesome. I Teberu is my hands down, not just the most anticipated Simon game. The Teberu, like the zombie side that comes with Teberu is my it's my most anticipated. And that's a variation of Zombicide 2 or whatever it is, right? Oh, it's a new zombie side just for Teberu. Interesting. And it's it's 
amazing. It's got all the stuff you like a zombie side, like the opening a door and there's zombies in there, and, and so much more. So like, on, oh, it's fantastic. It's cool. it's fantastic. I am such an app or technology skeptic when it comes to board games, but I was interested in Tebru. Like I was it like, was, I, wow. the idea of rolling those dice and hearing the shotguns and pulling out an app, it, it did look appealing. It looked like a nightmare and an expensive nightmare, but it looked appealing. It tells you a story when you walk into a room. It's awesome. So if you, if you open a door, it tells you what zombies to put in there. So you don't have to worry about the cards. Yeah, it takes away... Um, someone having the responsibility of reading out the story scenarios and that person can then be a part of the game and experience it at the same time without having the pressure to read, which I thought was great. Like, I don't, I don't think this is, well, it just changes the, the experience. I don't think it's going to change, like every board game is not going to be like this necessarily, but well, the thing is, and it's not a video game. Here's what, what, I, what I loved about it is you walk, you open this door you spawn the zombies and it tells you where to put them because you got your little iPad off to the side yeah. and it tells you to put zombies up, 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 there. You, so you drop them in and then you open the door, but then there's uh, like a uh, cinematic scene kicks in on the, on the iPad and you see this voice acting. And there's a voice from the back of the room and you go to check out what that is. And some guy's surrounded by zombies and he's like, and the voice acting is amazing. It's, I think it's done by the guy, the, the guy who did Bender from uh, Futurama or whatever for the one thing we saw or sure. something like that. I might be wrong, but I think it was. Anyways, the voice acting was awesome. It was all like comic book drawings, but like with the par- uh, parallax scrolling yeah. thing that yeah. you're doing. And there's scenarios where that the guy's trapped and then you save him from zombies. And if you do, then he talks to you and you have options to make and the team votes and everybody plays with their iPhones. So everybody votes yes or no if they want to help this guy, give him a gun, not give him a gun. It's so good. Yeah, I'm still oh, and, I'm wary of the app stuff, but I am excited for it. Oh, but they also have this thing where it's like a window, and if zombies pile up on the other side of the window, a um, a health meter shows up on the iPad because the zombies are breaking through the window, and it adds another dimension because you can walk into a room and zombies fall from the ceiling. And then, how cool is this? Um, wasn't it that you could play? You could play with someone else in another area well, they, they, were, the they were working on that they, oh. that wasn't functional but they were talking about working with like I, we could play with you right now so that's one of the things they want to work on is i can play zombie side with you would be playing the same game interesting that sounds fun it's, yeah it's, it's really so cool. good i can't wait that's yeah. my own anticipated. It's, anticipated. it's okay i timestamp all my videos so it's going to be like one two three four five back to four then back to five <laughs> it's be like a little bit of a conversation there but which brings oh, yeah. me to my most anticipated game. Not most anticipated. You see, you got me confused oh. now. Which brings me to my most played Zombicide game, which Zombicide Black Play came in at number two. But for me, number one is Cthulhu Death May Die. That I got that game, and it basically had everything that I liked about Black Plague. I still frequently go back and forth on which one I prefer. I constantly am arguing with myself as the pros and cons. But I there are many elements of Black of Death May Die that I that I loved as soon as I picked it up. Like the character development is so immensely satisfying. You're going insane and picking those options and like being like, I'm gonna I'm gonna tackle that big bad. I'm gonna like get four different abilities before, but maybe I'll go insane. But it's okay. You got this. You can pick, you can clean up the mess after me. That whole mechanic of constant escalation as you and the elder one get progressively more powerful. It it there are so many aspects of of Zombicide Black Plague that I prefer, but there's so many aspects of Cthulhu Death May Die, and also like the scenarios, for instance. You mentioned going through the scenarios. For Black Plague, for me, I never bothered really doing that. The scenarios to me didn't feel like a story. I just I just pick one whenever I'm in the mood. I just grab this one. I'm like, I think I may have played that one a while ago, and I grab that. Versus Cthulhu Death May Die, every scenario really to me feels genuinely different in terms of the objectives, the way it plays out. So between the different scenarios, the the character upgrading, the I don't know what else uh, in terms of why I like it better or why sometimes I like it better. It depends on the day. But that when I got that game, uh, whenever it arrived, you know, late 2019, I want to say. It arrived late 2019. And by the time 2019 was over, it had become my most played game of 2019. And then I went, I continued hardcore into like the first quarter of this year. And then it, it has actually sat unplayed for a good six months now, which makes me sad. I need to play it. But it is by far my most played. Yeah, I see it right behind you. Exactly. I, it's by far my most played Zombicide game, both, not nah, come on game, both in terms of hours played and in terms of, I think I have like 70 hours played on it, which is insane. Wow. Yeah, we, that's a great pick because we crushed through like, we loved it. Like, we just kept, we were playing uh, twice, like two times a night. Like we come home, yeah. like let's, 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 we just crush out two missions. All right, let's uh, wrap up the day and go to bed, do some editing, whatever we have to do. Yeah. But yeah, every day for like, 
probably two weeks. We were just coming from two missions, two missions, two missions, two missions. And uh, and we didn't we didn't get through everything. You yes, did or didn't? We did. We did. Oh, it's nice because so I'm in the same boat. I've got through. I think I have like three missions left in the stretch goal box. I finished all of yeah. season one. No, no, wait, no. I finished all of season one, and I think I finished five of season two. So I have one left in season two, and then the stretch goals. But yeah, it, it's. I mean, I just, we 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 replayed, and I've that's one that I've replayed the first missions like seven times or whatever because I keep introducing new people to it and starting from the beginning. Because while I like a lot of the scenarios, that first scenario is still one of my favorites. I think the last time we played, we lost terribly. We went back because we didn't play them in order. Uh, but we um, we last one we played was the one with the p- putting the dynamite on the moose and the the alien ship. What was the Canadian? That was an expansion, wasn't it? That's got to be it? a stretch goal or something because yeah, I don't I didn't get this one. We played it because it was the the moose was in it. It what the moose? Yeah, because you blow up moose. It was yeah. I think it's the one we recorded. Yeah. But we got yeah that. You're that Canadian. You're supposed to like moose, not moose moose. You're supposed to like moose not blow them up. Did we blow them? Was our mission to blow them up or stop? I think we had to blow them up. I can't. I, I don't remember. think we had to stop because like sorry, yeah, it was. I don't remember. We did. I don't think you. No, I don't think you want. I don't think you're supposed to blow them up. I, I think, think you're you supposed to, to them stop them from getting abducted by the. I think by blowing them up. Oh, maybe I don't know. I don't How know. else would you do it, Brittany? That'd be ridiculous. <laughs> There's only one way to stop moose from getting abducted by aliens. I don't is to blow them up. That must be it. Must be the answer. It was a cool. It was a cool. Um, yeah. But I'd say like Cthulhu might be close to our second as well. Like, yeah. so we're the opposite of you. We're, yeah. Do you track plays? <laughs> Sorry, do we? Tra- no. No, we, we need to. We do that. We do a horrible job of tracking plays. We'll go through like two weeks where we track plays, and then we'll not do it for six like months. six months, and then we do it for another week and a half, and then not again. We're just terrible. Yeah. So I, I mean, I just do it. I find it incentivizes me to play more, which is enough reason to track. But I, I definitely go through like I'll go through two days or three days where I play games. I'm like, oh, I missed them all. Whatever. I move on to the next day because I just I don't really care about my data as much. I just want to push myself to play another game and push myself to play another game. But yeah, and that is basically our first five questions. And so basically, if you've watched this far, then you should go on over to their channel and check it out because we are going to answer five more questions about different command games, including what com- what I- IP we want to see turned into a command game. And so go ahead, link down below, check out their channel, head on over there where we're going to do the same exact thing, just with five more games of which they inevitably have two answers for half of those as well. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, Mark and Brittany, thanks so much for being here. And to everyone else, have a good one. See you, everybody. Bye. Bye.